Christmas morning is always warm and exciting when children are young and their faces are flush with anticipation. When my daughter's four children were small and our, our only grandchildren at the time, Cheryl and my son-in-law Steve would journey to Williamsburg on alternate years with their young brood to spend Christmas with their Haywood grandparents. One of our traditions was for Papa to get up before anyone else, put the sausage and egg casserole in the oven, turn on the coffee pot, start the fire in the fireplace, and then yell up the stairs, you won't believe what happened last night. Santa Claus left a bunch of gifts under the tree. And then I would step out of the way as a stampede of four pairs of small feet quickly followed. On this particular morning, however, the routine was interrupted by near tragedy. One of our close friends in the church had given me some rich pine knot kindling with the warning not to use too much at one time. But it was Christmas, and I was eager to have a large fire to set the stage for another fantastic family Christmas morning. Besides, it was cold, and I wanted a quick hot fire. So I placed one medium-sized and then one small piece of kindling underneath the dry hickory logs. That was one piece too many. A sudden fire exploded in a roar and began racing in billowing sheets up the chimney, where it ignited the creosote and other flammable materials coating the inside of the chimney. Running outside, I was terrified to see flames reaching toward the sky from the top of the chimney, depositing little flaming splinters on the roof. The folly of procrastination filled me with regret as I watched the small fireballs land on the dry leaves, which I had failed to blow off the roof, despite my wife's constant reminders. Instinctively, I prayed that perhaps the most common prayer which escapes the lips of frail humanity. Help! Fighting the urge to call firemen out on a cold Christmas morning, I hurried back inside to fill a pitcher of water and pour it on the fire. I could not control the fire in the chimney, but at least I could control the flame I could reach. Can we come down now? An eager child's voice called from the top of the stairs. Not yet, I yelled back over my right shoulder. <laughs> I have to put out the fire. The flames in the fireplace were mostly extinguished after my second pitcher of water. With much relief, I watched the water drip steadily onto the growing flood at the bottom. However, the fire I could not reach was still roaring up the chimney. Another tiny voice, which I identified as Austin, the oldest grandson, called out, Is Santa Claus all right? Santa Claus is fine, I yelled back. He left before the fire started. I could hear the sighs of relief all the way down the stairs. <laughs> then I uttered my own sigh of relief as I realized the roar up the chimney was diminishing and finally felt free to call everyone downstairs for the opening of gifts. Waiting for the shuffling commotion upstairs to reach the den, I looked with regret at the sad spectacle of the wet cold fireplace. We wouldn't have our warm fire this Christmas, but the warmth of a safe family would be more than enough. Later that day, as it was our custom following Christmas morning, we loaded our cars with gifts and clothing and headed to my parents' home in North Carolina. Kayla, our eight-year-old granddaughter, and four-year-old grandson, Christian, were riding in our back seat. It had been a long day, and the early darkness was already creeping in before we began our journey. Traffic was also beginning to build, which made it difficult to keep an eye on the two cars following containing the rest of our family. Needless to say, I was not looking forward to the five-hour trip my mood had a lot in common with the growing darkness around us. But then, Christian began looking out the window from his perch in the back seat. 
exclaiming over the Christmas decorations on all the houses we were passing. His cries were filled with the awe and wonder, which only the fresh eyes of a four-year-old can fully see. Oh, look at that! That is beautiful! I can't believe that! Look, Kayla, look! Gradually from my dark place, Christian's unabashed enthusiasm began to reach me. I felt a smile begin to tug at my mouth as I chuckled quietly at the excited voice behind me. Suddenly the volume of his voice jumped several octaves as Christian cried out, That's the brightest light in the whole universe! I glanced out my side window in an effort to see what had grabbed his attention so completely. But the traffic made it impossible for me to spend much time searching for that brightest light in the whole universe. But Christian had convinced me. I don't know what he had seen. Maybe it was an especially bright star or perhaps an artificial light of some kind. I don't know. I do know this, however. If we can open our eyes this Christmas with the wonder of a four-year-old child, the road ahead for all of us will be illuminated with the brightest light in the whole universe.